welcome to Brew TV, your one and only beer and brewing TV show located right here in Perth. Every week we'll be exploring the world of beer and brewing in Western Australia, from the home brewer to the professional breweries and everything else in between. And for you cider drinkers and ginger beer lovers, we'll also include you as well. G'day and welcome to Brew TV. We've got a great show for you tonight. We're down here at Brews R Us in Greenwood, a brew on premise. I'm drinking their ginger beer, but there's a choice of over 140 styles of beer. More on that in tonight's show. But first, we're visiting the Tourism Council to see what they're doing about the breweries in Western Australia. Cheers. Okay, so we're here at the magnificent grounds of the Burswood. We've got Evan Hall, the CEO of the Tourism Council of Western Australia. So Evan, nice day? Lovely day here, yeah, lovely day always in Western Australia. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what the Tourism Council is all about. Uh, we represent the tourism industry across the state, anything from the big airlines and airports and, uh, and Crown Casino, uh, right through to the tour operator with the four wheel drive in the National Park, uh, boat operator, bed and breakfast operators, and of course all the uh, magnificent uh, restaurants, wineries and of course breweries uh, that, uh, that people flock to Western Australia for. Fantastic, and I believe you're a not-for-profit independent body? We're that, a not-for-profit body. supports the, the, the we, we try and we, That's right, we try and bring the industry together. Uh, tourism works really well uh, when your, your cidery and your brewery is talking to the local hotel and talking to uh, the local motel and they're talking to the local attraction and, and everyone works together to give a really good experience for uh, uh, for our guests who are coming here to WA. Yeah, fantastic. That's, that's, that's great to see. We need it for WA. It's Ab absolutely. one of the most remote parts of the it, world. And it certainly yeah. is, and, and a lot of regional towns do rely on, on visitors come through to, to keep their town vibrant, keep the jobs in the town, and keep their, their local um, food and, uh, and other businesses going. Right, yeah. fantastic. So, get on to the, the real subject at hand. Yep. We've just had the Tourism Awards. Yes. Brew TV was invited to come mm. and film the, the one of the uh, the, 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 the nominations, yes. which was, uh, uh, let me get this right, it was uh, breweries, distilleries and wineries? Yes. Yes, yes. that's right. I'll get it right one day. Um, but we got a cider winner. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, Core Cider a, House was, was the winner this year. They're a fantastic operation in the Swan wow. Valley, very, very close to uh, to Perth. And, and they've made that classic journey from originally being an orchard uh, through to uh, becoming a, a fantastic boutique uh, cidery. Yes. And now they're absolutely in the tourism uh, business so people flock there for uh, for experience obviously for the great uh, the great ciders but it's a fantastic place Absolutely. to eat and yeah, spend the exactly. afternoon. Exactly and that's I think that's what brings a lot more people to the, the brewery cideries where they can put on a meal and people can sit in some absolutely fantastic yeah. grounds whereas you know not being biased towards the breweries but yeah. the wineries you get sort of trapped into a cellar door situation yes. have a couple of wines and then unless there is a restaurant there you've got to start moving on to the next one. Yeah, so. Absolutely, so there's a lot of um, uh, visitor experiences that are really based around people want to learn yes. a lot more so it's much obviously much better to, to enjoy that cider at the cidery yes. uh, or the brew at the, at the brewery and hear how it's being uh, yeah. being made and um, particularly if there's local produce involved or yes. the local skills yeah. uh, that they're bringing to it. So I know the breweries uh, they've, they've been very prominent over the last few years. How does the Tourism Council see the progression of the breweries, the cideries and its role within the tourism of Western Australia? Well, we're going out to restaurants, wineries, breweries and cideries. It's the single most popular activity for visitors to, uh, to Western Australia. Uh, for us it's very important. We're offering um, ciders, brews that, that just aren't available or, or aren't all over the place uh, in the east coast of Australia. Uh, so people will uh, flock here for, for that broad experience. I mean, yes. they're not just coming here to, uh, to taste a, a, a beer, um, but, but having that beer uh, on Cable Beach yes. uh, as the sun sets is, is a quintessential uh, Western Australian uh, tourism experience. Yes. As, you, yes. as you think that Matzo's beer, it's, um, yes. it's, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, and the Swan Valley and, and Margaret River, 
previously known as wine destinations yes. are now increasingly known as at least wine and yes. uh, and, and brewery destinations. But, but for the visitors, that they're wanting to try uh, different things. But what, what they want to try is stuff that's really special and um, inherently Western Australian. Yes. And that's what we've got a lot to offer. Yeah. So Evan, I know in, in the Eastern States, particularly in South Australia, the uh, equivalent of your tourism mm. council, they're now starting to promote the breweries and the cideries with the signage on the side of the roads, like our wineries do. Do you think that's something that will happen here? Absolutely, it's already happening here through our main cidery destinations like uh, the Swan Valley, the Perth Hills, Margaret River. Uh, it's very easy, it's great driving country. Yes. You go through and of course you, you just see out of the corner of your eye. Um, just as likely to see a, a cider house uh, as, a, as a winery when you're doing that uh, that drive. Also we're finding that uh, the tourists before they come over obviously like to plan uh, yes. where they're going to. Uh, so we've got a, um, a good list of, of all the best quality tourism experiences in Western Australia. They've all been accredited by us and they, they get the tick um, so that we know the, the, the best. And on our uh, on our website, trustthetick.com, yes. you can search for a, a cidery, you can search for a brewery specifically because now, now people are not just looking at the region, they want to know, I want to I do a, a beer tour, I want to do the cider tour of WA. So you can go down to that level and say, give me the best tourism experiences, the best cider houses in, um, yeah. uh, in WA and away you go. Fantastic, makes it nice and easy for people to find the best beers and ciders in the country if not the world. We'll put a link on our website to the Tourism Council and you can yourself can go and look for these lists and look for that accredited tourism uh, symbol and um, keep your eyes out and support the local industry. Look forward to you coming to Western Australia. Thanks Evan. Great, thanks. Hi John, welcome to the Life of Brewery. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Man. We're down here at the Last Drop Brewery with Head Brewer, Jan Hopper. Morning. Hi. Good mate, how are you? Yeah, good. Good to see you. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, thanks for inviting us into the, the domain of some absolutely fantastic beers. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So Jan, tell us a little bit about the place. Well, the place was uh, originally started in 1992 as a brewery. Uh, we opened up a, a pub in a brewery. Um, I, I became a brewer in Czech Republic as a sort of, when I just finished uh, my basic uh, education, I went to college. So straight from high school? Straight from you, high school. You became a brewer? I became a brewer. So without actually knowing what the beer is, that's, that's, uh, without that's, actually tasting it. That's heaven. That is heaven. <laughs> straight from school, I'm going to become school. a brewer. That's yes, and I was very lucky in that respect because it's sometimes very hard to decide at that age what yes, you want to do yes, in your life. Absolutely. Um, and obviously, uh, I've worked in, after the school in a few Prague breweries in Czech Republic, uh, but I fell in love uh, with craft brewing or small brewing, I would call it at that time, uh, with brewery, pub brewery called Ufleku, which is Prague's oldest uh, craft brewery. Okay. Great. Uh, and that's where I sort of get into sort of understanding and, and passion. For yes, that. yes. But back to the brewery here, yeah, yes. uh, we have imported brewery from Bavaria, uh, from, from defunct brewery back in, uh, I think it was in North uh, uh, West Bavaria, I don't know exactly the town, town. Uh, but it was built in 1961, okay. it's very robust and well-made brewery, sure, sure. Without any, uh, without any major, major changes, that brewery has been operating since uh, that time. Yes, except for a short period of time where it was uh, defunct. And yes, certainly, certainly. So this was set up in 1992, which would make it one of the first craft or craft boutique breweries in WA. That's correct. After Matilda Bay and Stella Anchor, we were the next one. Fantastic. To give a direction yeah. and yeah. buy any of the craft brewing. And it's I'm been continuously running since. Yes, that's so, correct. Yeah, so this we're operating under different, different names. Yes, so oh, well, we, yeah. we, uh, we started as an Elizabethan village pub, then Darling Range Brewing Company, but we fell in love with the name Last of Brewery, yes. which uh, originated in Kalamanda Hotel. Fantastic. Uh, or Hotel in Kalamanda, I should say. And uh, we fell in love with the name, and that's why we sort of took it on board. Great. Fantastic. Well, 
let's not stand here and let's have a tour of the brewery before we in. Thanks. Uh, so right now we are at the sort of, uh, mill room, uh, mm -hmm. if you like. Uh, you see behind me uh, we have a few, uh, few several bags of uh, malt uh, that originates in different places around the world. Uh, obviously there's some German malt, we have some yes. local Australian malt. And we also have a big silo outside, which is our uh, base malt. Okay, sure. And so these are your specialty malts. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, yes. We obviously want to support a local business as well, Absolutely. farmers and yes, manufacturers yes, yes. in WA. Yes. Uh, but obviously, with some of the beers, we have to compromise a bit yeah, on that. Specialty um, malting facilities and, and, and the, the, the grains. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So what you see here is basically a drip bin with a mill above. Uh, Above there, yes. Uh, we mill approximately 500 to 550 kilos for okay. each brew. Yep. brew. So we are uh, our brew house is about uh, 3,000 liters or 30 hectoliters, if you like. Sure, uh, sure. And uh, all we want to do here is to, to basically um, crush the malt and expose the inside of the grain to the yes. to the water in the mesh tank. Yes, fantastic. It's a great setup, I must say. It's, yeah, not too much heavy lifting. Not anymore. Uh, <laughs> in the old days, uh, yeah, we have a silo outside, yes. uh, as I mentioned. But in old days, uh, we obviously were not, we're not uh, big enough to support such a size of the silo, yes. uh, and we had to obviously start with a small yeah. amount of bags. But then it sort of started growing, and we ended up with this room being filled up completely with the bags, which wow. was very hard work. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, we decided to make an investment to the, in the silo, which paid off. Big time. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the next uh, step of brewing, obviously, after milling, is to uh, bring the mold into the mesh tun where it is mixed with uh, water. Water is obviously treated uh, by means of filtration. Yeah. We have to remove some of the impurities from water that comes from the uh, main system. We, sure. we focus mainly on, on solids and on uh, chlor uh, chlorine and chlor water. Yes, yes. And chlorides. And, um, uh, this water is basically heated up in our uh, hot water system. Yes. And then we obviously mix the mesh with uh, with water here. Sure. Now, ignore the water side of things. Tell me about these beauties. 1962, yeah, I think. I'm very really proud of this equipment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 1961. Uh, 1961. It's all copper. All copper. It's very unique uh, in Australia, I would say. There might be a few breweries around, but not many. Yes. Uh, and I would quite believe that we are only one with fully copper yeah, brew house in yeah, Germany. No. Uh, copper is also quite important for the health of the yeast and character of the beer. So yes, lots of brewers, sure, even nowadays, sure. with the new equipment, uh, ask for installing copper parts into our right. yes. yes, yes. But okay. to us, uh, we basically machine uh, at 60 degrees, and depending on the beer, uh, we step machine up to uh, say 72 degrees. Okay, depending on the yes. Of the yes. beer, yes. the type of beer. And for some specialty beer like uh, uh, Oktoberfest beer or some. Uh, Let's say in winter, in winter, winter I make uh, dark wheat beer mm -hmm. using the coction. The coction is again very European uh, technology, sure. where part of the mesh is boiled for a certain amount of time and brings lots of flavor, caramelized sugars, right. and okay. into it as well. Yes, yes. Uh, but after, generally speaking, the infusion is uh, after, say, one and a half hour of meshing, we transfer the mesh into our lava tun yes. uh, by means of pump. And here uh, we separate spend grains from the uh, wort. Yes, uh, that's the false bottom. Probably yes. the biggest yes. false bottom you've seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's bronze. It's, yeah, bronze. Bronze yeah, made. Yeah. And um, again, this is original, as you see, this is original 1961, so it's probably, uh, again, all this, all this piece of equipment uh, yeah. <laughs> in WA, I would reckon. I'll tell you what, there'll be some engineers that would love to. <laughs> get their eyes on some of this equipment. So. It's very basic, but it's oh, working really well. Yeah, and yeah. maintenance-wise, it's really simple. So it's not a big cost for us to maintain these brews. Yeah. Fantastic, because the, the brewing is very expensive. Yeah. Everything is <laughs> everything <laughs> here. It's very expensive. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's right. having brew houses like that gives us gives us a bit of peace of mind and uh, there's minimal to spend on yeah. that. Yeah. That's fantastic. So after after lautering, the spend rate is separated. The wort is flowing back by the gravity. Yes, the vessel is high, as you can see. Yes, and it runs back to the kettle, and uh, we want to achieve volume of uh, approximately three thousand liters. Okay. 
So we, with the initial, say, 1500 liters, the sparging yes. is sparged twice, yes. sometimes continuously, sometimes in two separate okay. three separate yeah. uh, runs. Uh, we bring it here, and then we're using an external heat exchanger on the wall to heat up and boil uh, all the wall. We're yes. adding hops in the form of granules, uh, but sometimes we're using also flour hops, but that's mainly, again, for special beer. 